good morning my dear students welcome back to science class let us begin today's class with the chapter third fiber to fabric this becomes that that is how fibers obtained from plants animals or chemicals gets ultimately converted into clothes we wear so watch this video till the end to understand the complete process step by step apart from this we will try to answer some very interesting questions such as is fabric really a continuous piece how does a lump of cotton like this gets converted into threads or how does these threads ultimately becomes fabric how a tiny creature on earth that is silk worm gives us the very expensive and royal silk fabric by killing itself yes it's get killed in the process why you should never wear synthetic clothes while working in the kitchen bed sheets pillow covers towels curtains blankets your table cloth your shopping bag and even your school bags all these items are made up of different kinds of clothing material isn't it you will be able to notice the difference by feeling and touching them actually all of these items are made up of different kinds of fabrics so now question arises what are fabrics from where do we get fabrics how these various items are made from fabrics so let's try to answer each of these questions Whenever you had visited a garment shop you must have noticed bundles of clothes like this lying there these are called fabrics these fabrics are stitched either manually with the help of sewing machine or in the machines in the factories to get all these different items such as clothes bed sheets pillow covers curtains blankets shopping bags carpets etc So let's now try to understand about fabrics in more detail. Whenever we look at any fabric, it seems like a continuous piece, isn't it? But is fabric really a continuous piece? For this, I want you to take a closer look at any fabric piece in your house. For even more understanding, try taking pictures of a fabric piece by zooming your camera. What did you notice? you will observe that while from a distance fabric seems like a continuous piece but actually it is not as you observe it more closely you will notice that fabric is made up of two sets of strands arranged together in horizontal and vertical fashion so let's find out what these strands are these strands are called as yarns or loose threads you must have seen these yarns at some tailor's shop or even at your home to better understand yarns try taking out a loose thread from any of the edges of a fabric piece these loose threads are called yarns so thus we can say that fabric is made up of yarns arranged together now let's try to look at yarns more closely for this scratch one end of the yarn which you took out from the fabric with your nail and observe it carefully you will notice that yarn splits into many thinner strands these small and thin strands are called fibers thus we can say that yarns are made up of still thinner strands called fibers or in other words we can say that fibers are twisted together to make yarns So now we understood that fabrics are made up of yarns and yarns are further made up of fibers or in other words we can say that several strands of fibers are twisted together to make yarns and yarns are arranged together to make fabrics now next question arises where do we get fibers from we get fibers from two sources natural sources and artificial or man made sources the fibers which are obtained from plants and animals are called natural fibers for example from plants we obtain cotton jute and coir fiber coir is obtained from coconut husk similarly from animals we get wool and silk fibers 
The fibers which are synthesized in the industry from simple chemicals obtained from petroleum are called synthetic fibers. For example, polyester, nylon, acrylic, etc. If you want to know about different fibers, try to observe tags of different items at your house to know about which fibers they are made up of. You will notice that some are made up of 100% cotton while some are made up of 100% polyester, some are made up of acrylic or some are made up of wool. We will now study about plant fibers in detail. Let's take cotton first. Cotton fibers are obtained from fruits of cotton plants and these fruits are called cotton balls. Cotton is mainly grown in black soil and warm climate. In India, cotton is mainly grown in states such as Gujarat, Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana and Punjab. The balls of cotton burst open when they are ripe and cotton balls are then picked up either manually with hand or with a harvester. But the cotton picked up from the plants has seeds in it. Thus, cotton fibers are separated from seeds by combing them. This process of separating cotton seeds from cotton fiber is called ginning. Ginning was traditionally done by hand. Nowadays, machines are used for ginning. We will now study about another important plant fiber that is jute. Jute fiber is obtained from stem of jute plants. It is grown in rainy season. Jute plant needs a plain alluvial soil and standing water. In India, jute plants are mainly cultivated in West Bengal, Bihar and Assam. Jute plant is normally harvested when it is in flowering stage. The stems of harvested plants are bundled and immersed in water for few days until they start rotting. This process is known as retting. The fibers are then separated by hand from rotting stem. The process is known as stripping. This is how jute fibers are extracted. Jute fibers are extensively used to make shopping bags and gunny bags. Now let's study about animal fibers. There are two important animal fibers, wool and silk. We get wool from hair of sheep, goat, rabbit, yak or camel. Hair of these animals along with thin layer of skin are removed to get wool fiber. The process is called as shearing. Wool is used for making warm clothes such as sweaters, caps, shawls, gloves, blankets, etc. Let's now study about silk. Silk is a costly fiber and has a very fine quality. We get silk from silkworm which lives on the leaves of mulberry plants. The larva of silk moth secretes a sticky fluid which becomes silk fiber. The larva then covers its body with silk fiber and turns into pupa. This protective covering is called as cocoon. In simple words, we can say that silkworm covers itself with a protective covering like this, which is known as cocoon. These cocoons are then boiled in water to get silk fiber. But unfortunately, while boiling cocoons, the pupa inside gets killed. It is boiled alive. Do you know that nearly 6,600 silkworms are killed to make just one kg of silk? Isn't it sad? So let's now study about synthetic or man-made fibers. Synthetic fibers are made by humans from chemicals. For example, polyester, acrylic, nylon, rayon, etc. There are several advantages of synthetic fibers. For example, they are less expensive, they are durable, they are readily available, they dry up quickly, they are easy to maintain, they do not wrinkle easily, easy to wash, they are elastic and can be easily stretched out, they are strong and can be used to make parachutes and ropes to sustain heavy load. But there is one important disadvantage of synthetic fibers which you must keep in mind. Synthetic fibers melt on heating. So if the clothes catch fire, it can be disastrous. The fabric melts and sticks to the body of the person wearing it. So we should therefore never wear synthetic clothes while working in the kitchen or in a laboratory. 
With this, we completed fibers. We already know that several strands of fibers twisted together make yarn. But how actually these fibers obtained from plants, animals or chemicals are converted into yarns? The answer is spinning. The process of making yarn from fibers is called spinning. In this process, fibers from a mass of cotton wool are drawn out and twisted. Spinning is done manually with charkha or takli on a smaller scale, whereas machines are used for spinning yarn on larger scale. Now let's see how yarns are converted into fabric. Weaving and knitting are used for conversion of yarn to fabric. The process of arranging two sets of yarns together perpendicular to each other to make fabric is called weaving. Weaving of fabric is done on looms. Looms are either hand operated or power operated. In knitting, a single yarn is used to make a piece of fabric, unlike weaving where two sets of yarns are required. Knitting is done by hand and also on machines. So this chart summarizes the entire chapter. The fibers which are obtained from plants, animals or chemicals after spinning are converted into yarns. Yarns are converted into fabric by weaving and knitting and ultimately fabrics are converted into clothes by stitching. So I really hope that now you have learned all the steps from fiber to fabric. So before completing this chapter, let's take a quick look at history of clothing material. Early man used big leaves, bark of trees, animal skin or fur to cover their bodies. But after settling in agriculture communities, man started to weave. They started weaving grass, twigs, animal hair, vines into long strands, which were then woven into fabrics. Then man became aware about plant fibers. Early Indians wore fabrics made of cotton. In ancient Egypt, cotton as well as flax were used for making fabrics. But in those days, stitching was unknown. People simply draped the fabrics around their bodies. Even today, unstitched clothes like saris, dhotis, lungis or turbans are widely used. When swing needle was invented, people learned how to stitch fibers to make fabric. Stitched clothes have gone many variations since then. This is the completion of third chapter. Thank you.